So when does it all like start for real? It already has. Alex Ryder is an ordinary kid thrown into extraordinary circumstances. He lives a very normal life and one day his uncle unexpectedly dies. And then he discovers that everything he has ever believed is untrue. Hello, Alex. Your uncle was a spy. You are too. And he's thrown into a world of espionage. So you're like a spy? Sort of, kind of. Not really. I don't know. <laughs> Otto was chosen from, I think, 650 young people who auditioned for that part. Tom, have you got Find My Phone switched on? Well, on your phone, have you got... You know the app, Find My Phone, have you got it switched on? Yeah. Give me your password. It was the most intense day of auditions I've ever had in my life. And I said, they're never going to pick me. But they did. I worked 18 days. Otto worked 52. He's in everything. This show is him. Otto's a great actor. You can come in. Um, He's, he's properly dedicated himself to this. And, yeah, it's, it's showing in the performance, and especially today in the stunt, like, just, oh, yeah, you want me to climb this school? No problem, absolutely no problem, I'll do it. We've created a cover identity for you. Alex is a boy becoming a man under the intensity of having saved the world. Don't mess it up. No pressure. <laughs> See you. Bye, boy. In terms of acting, he does the fighting. I do the witty line. You know when undiscovered talent becomes discovered talent? That's just happened. I'm Braddock O'Connor and I play Tom in Alex Ryder. <laughs>
He will always be using you. He's working for MI6, but in our script it's called The Department. And Alan Blunt runs the show. Something's not right. Put a watch on him. He's tough and smart and ruthless. If we play by the old rules, we're going to lose the new battles. Blunt makes a decision to use a juvenile in a role that is unsuitable. There's something we'd like you to do for us. You can piss off. Just pick up the phone in the morning, Alex, if you change your mind. Blunt manipulates Alex into this world of espionage and spies against his will. I'll do it, all right? Call off the dogs. Secrecy is an occupational necessity in our line of work. When I was a kid, I read all the Alex Ryder books. So to play someone that I idolized, it's a dream come true. I was definitely a fan of the books as a kid. It was so easy to get into the mindset of it could be me. All of us can be spies. You know, we're all capable of doing these great things. And I think that's why the books have been so successful. The books have sold 19 million copies. They're in 33 different countries now. What's so exciting is that it is very recognizably Alex Ryder, and yet there are so many differences. All the cast, the whole team has put so much energy into making this fun and action-packed, and you couldn't ask for more. So, this is Alex. Run. Calm down. And don't mess it up. The Alex Ryder books are a huge global phenomenon. I wrote the first sentence of a new book called Stormbreaker. When the doorbell rings at three in the morning, it's never good news. And with those lines, I unlocked a phenomenon that would completely change my life. Alex Ryder sprung fully formed onto the page and suddenly I was looking at 19 million copies sold worldwide in 33 different countries and um, it still goes on to this day. I find it very impressive. I think what really has made these books successful is the fact that he is a reluctant spy. He just wants to be at school, to have friends and girlfriends. Oh, Aisha. Oh, hey, uh... Alex. Yeah. And he gets dragged out of that life and thrown into a world of danger. And I think that actually really strikes a chord with the readers. I don't even need to dial, do I? You're listening right now. I'll do it, all right? I'll do it. The major way that the series echoes the books is in Alex himself. I mean, Otto Farrand is, for me, a perfect Alex Ryder. He absolutely gets the character. He gets the emotional journey. He's also extremely good and physically perfect for the part, incidentally. Andres Prochaska, the director, wanted to really bring as much of our personalities into these roles as possible because if we brought ourselves to them, they would feel real and more relatable. And that was at the core of the characters that were created. Just tell me who did it. And we'll finish them. I mean, utterly. I was very fortunate that I had a wonderful team of producers, Jill Green, Eve Gutierrez, and I had a brilliant writer with Guy Burt. I jumped at it because I've got kids of my own. Uh, they love the books. It was a chance to take those stories and make them kind of grittier, more grounded. He's been utterly faithful to my vision and to the stories and to the characters, whilst at the same time expanding everything, making it more believable, uh, more emotional. <coughs> Throughout this entire process, it has been one of collaboration rather than conflict. It has been a very pleasant journey. So you're saying we're all on the same side here? When we first talked to Guy, we wanted the television series to be for a wider audience, a more grown-up audience. You're absolutely right, of course. We're going to delve a lot deeper into the backgrounds of Mrs. Jones, Alan Blunt. We're going to see much more of Jack and Tom, and we're bringing new characters into the story as well. The books are very action-packed and they're full of adventure. And that's great, but that doesn't sustain over eight episodes. So the thing that I focused on most was diving as far as we could into the characters, the relationships between the characters, seeing Alex not just as a spy, but also with his best mate at school, and then with the people that he meets at Point Blank as well. This is Alex. Alex begins in one place at the beginning of the series, but by episode eight he has moved to quite a different place. And that journey, I think, is what is so compelling. So I think it's been a very happy collaboration. My story, my books, but his vision.
there are particular beats that we just had to have, and I think top of the list is Alex snowboarding down a mountain in the Alps on an ironing board, because that's the only tool he has at his disposal. But then there are other things that we shifted slightly, like the bad guy's second in command is Ava Stellenbosch, and in the book she is a muscular um, ex-Soviet Union bodybuilder, and that felt a little brutalist and I felt she was more interesting and more threatening if she was psychologically scary rather than physically scary. And now you're going to die. Other things that we had to keep that his uncle is killed and that when that happens, Alex doesn't know he's a spy. Thomas Levin plays Yasin Grigorovich, the assassin who turns up in many of the Alex Ryder books. And what he brings to the part, I think, he makes him quite silent and quite restrained. We may have a problem. And that's why he's so deadly. He's just doing a job. Yeah. Yeah, that's what's scary about it. He's not emotional about it. He's just, he's a cold killer. Come on, man, we all have our own particular set of skills. It's definitely a more your skills kind of thing. The character of Tom, who plays Alex's best friend, he didn't actually feature in the Point Blank book. He is something that Guy Burt, when reading all of the books available, latched onto and wanted to kind of pull in earlier. And he's done an incredible job of really giving us a great, fun, smart character for Alex to interact with. Tom, can you do something for me? What? Go home, tell Jack I'll be back later. What? Just do it. Well, call me. The books indulge themselves in great excitement, gadgets, and fun. We wanted to make it a bit more something that you could believe might secretly be happening in Britain today. I know Krav Maga. I know shooting people in the head. Why don't we calm down and have a cup of tea and a chat? He's also created some new characters. There's a girl called Kyra. She hacked the Tokyo Stock Exchange ticker and wiped seven million dollars off the Nikkei in 20 seconds. Who is a bit of a push-pull character against Alex. Kyra, say hello to Alex. Hello to Alex. It's a very international cast, it's a very diverse cast, it's a very young cast, but I think you'll find that the characters may not look as they're described in the books in some ways, but they are all very true to those characters. Guy has done a fantastic job in expanding them, but they are nonetheless recognisable to what is on the page. Mm. How do I look? Perfect. <laughs> Andreas Prochaska, our director, has done a fantastic job. I think he has made a very adult, sophisticated world that takes itself completely seriously. There's something very cinematic in the material. Tonally, we are mixing coming-of-age, thriller, spy, film noir, and almost horror-like elements. Visually, it's just stunning. It's gritty and it's darker and it, it appeals to a wider audience because it's not necessarily shot in a way that is just for kids or teenagers. Yeah, it's going to look awesome. It's kind of the time for bigger TV series. And I think as soon as things like Game of Thrones came on air, and it was possible to realize things in a bigger, cinematic, more global way, these books are completely suited to that. It's good to be back. I think what this show has done so fantastically well is to grasp the essence of the book, my intention in writing them, the world that I envision, and yet to have reinterpreted them for the very widest audience. So what you see is a fast pace, hard hitting, enjoyable adventure show. It delivers a story with emotion, action, and surprise. The world we inhabit is Murky. Things are never as clear as we would wish. <laughs>